Right, so today we have another reaction um, video. Um, my reactions are a bit more different than normal reactions because I um, haven't got the editing tools yet to have my face. But you'll still hear me and I'll pause the video every now and again to give my comments. So today I'm going to um, basically face my fears. Tugs. Freaking tugs. It, I still get PTSD from this show. Bear in mind, I had a VHS of this show. I was about four or five years old. Mum didn't know any better. She just thought it was basically like Thomas Tank Engine. And even Thomas is a bit messed up. This channel, shout out Steve Reviews. He covers a lot of like really dark cartoons. Some car some for kids, some for adults. So let's watch Tugs. Thomas the Tank Engine. You've probably heard of him. Yep. <laughs> the fun loving yet also cheeky three wheeled little steam engine. Three wheels. up to all sorts of adventures. Oh. Like falling down a mine, yep. meeting the queen multiple times, <laughs> or becoming a dragon overlord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. For a show that began airing way back in 1984, it is crazy to think of just how popular and relevant Thomas went on to be. With over 500 television episodes, Ooh. a cinematic film release, Seen it. 13 other feature length specials, live action attractions. Have been there yet? <laughs> and memes after memes after of the memes. memes. The memes are hilarious. Include that one. I've seen that one. That's funny. <laughs> the series is actually still in production to this day. Though it has moved away from its charming model railway aesthetic to a modern day generic CGI production. Ugh. Thomas had never seen such bullshit before. <laughs> Love that one. The faces are moving. Why? It's kinda creepy looking when it moves. And it even looks like there's potential for another cinematic film release to come out. Oh. Though this isn't yet confirmed. Oh. It does go to show though, just how popular and loved the franchise has become to both kids and adults over multiple generations. And with all that popularity, it may come to a surprise to most of you that back in the 80s, Thomas actually had a sister show. This. I told you the Thomas knockoff. I told ya. Is tugs. Ugh, PTSD. Kicks in. Which focused on the lives of tugboats rather than steam engines. My load is wider. And although Thomas is renowned for dark, having this that's a very dark episode. Darker and more spooky episodes. Tugs really blew that out of the water. Quite no literally. <laughs> But whereas Thomas saw great success and continued to run into production, Netflix. Tugs did not, hmm. and only lasted a single season, with just 13 episodes being made. Fun fact, there's actually a small fan base for Tugs on TikTok that includes fan art. So... Which, given at how beautiful this show looked, it, is, how it well looks the really good. And stories were crafted, it does seem so odd that it would fail so quick. Whereas in contrast, Thomas succeeded. Mm. So we're going to take a look at this forgotten gem and relive all of those. Oh no, no not that episode. That had been plunged deep into the core nope, of my brain. Not that episode. Christmas is on with festive specials oh, delivered in delivery. Add, from add, 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 la 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 la. There you go. Nope. Mm. Tugs was produced by Tugs Limited for Television South and Clearwater Features. It first broadcast in April of 1989 huh. and ended in June 1989. You can immediately see how this series had a similar look to Thomas the Tank Engine, and that's probably because it was created by Robert D. Cadona and David Mitten. The same people who had created the first two seasons of Thomas. Told ya, knock off. The series is set in England during the 1920s, where we follow two rival tugboat fleets. I saw a comment saying it's not set in England, but 
even though it was filmed at it was filmed in England, that's probably what the mistake was made. Um, it was filmed in Shepparton Studios, which I live nearby. As they compete for contracts in the big city ball, the first of the fleets are the Star Tugs. They are the honest and hard-working tugboats that See, we the. See that law on there, Tin, something. He's the cutest one of all of them. The one, the, the little kitty one. Indians are meant to root for. On this team, we have Ten Cents. Ten Cents. Man, that's it. Ten Cents. He's the cutest one. Top Hat, Warrior, Hercules, and Sunshine. Who and Sunshine. Sunshine's quite really cute as well. Episode. Each of these characters are distinctive in both their appearance and personalities. Ten Cents being the young and cheeky. Sunshine. Oh. Sorry about that, I'm getting notifications. God damn it. Keep just boo thinking. Very good for day workers here. Might brighten you up a bit tougher. I think what I was getting as well was ten cent with his head would move up and down every time he talked. That bit freaked me out as well, because that doesn't happen in Thomas. Top hat being the posh and snobby. Yeah, top hat with her head moves. That bit freaks me out as well. Warrior being the strong yet not too bright. Why couldn't I have been a liner, I wonder? Because you're not big enough. You are silly, Warrior. Hercules, <laughs> my personal favourite. I want to see more Tug memes. That's what I want to see in the future. There's more memes of Tugs. It is meme worthy. Being the smooth talking, classy Tug. And uh, you do not let that check things out. Check all you like, sweetheart. I'm needed elsewhere. Stay right where you are. There's an order. Hello. The Sartugs are led by Captain Star, who, like all the other humans in the show, is never shown to be on screen but instead only seen talking through a megaphone. He also provides the narration for each episode, and is brilliantly voiced by Patrick Allen. I know, I, that bit I do remember, I do remember the um, narrator. That, I think he, his voice did kind of make it more serious, if that makes sense. Whose voice just makes everything feel so much more dramatic. Yeah. The bridge was weakened by the accident. Top Hat could only hope his idea would work. There was no way of warning the train. Unlike in Thomas... Yeah, that's... That and a certain episode... You can see why it wasn't suitable for a four or five-year-old. You have a very delicate brain. However, the narrator doesn't voice all of the characters, and instead each have their own individual voices, which I think helps give further distinction to their personality. Then on the other tug fleet, we have the Z-Stacks, who I don't really want to say are the straight-up bad guys. No, I wouldn't. But they are the antagonists. The reason I don't yeah, want to say... Yeah, I say they're more like business rivals. Like, you get that with like, ice cream sellers. Like, they have a, you have to have one separate ice cream van in the neighbourhood. Every single ice cream van is their own business rival. Um, That's what Mum told me, anyway. Our guys is because they aren't really straight up evil. They're just more like an aggressive business rival. Yeah, I'm saying. Okay. Using tricks and tactics to try and one up the Star Tugs. But there are instances in the series where the Z Stacks and Star Tugs will work together to overcome a greater threat. On the Z Stack fleet, we have Zip, Zug, Zack, Zebedee, and Zoran. That uh, I remember those names because well, all we can said. They were easy to say. Who, yes, as you can tell, all have their names beginning with Z. Yep, and they were easy Which to say if it's not Which if they just refuse to hire tugs that don't begin with the letter Z, or they just have their name changed once they're recruited. Hmm. And again, like the Star Tugs, each Z stack has their own distinct personality. Zip being the younger and more naive. These cats are going to find a Mr. Bone, or my name's not Zoran. <laughs> but it is Zoran. <laughs> Zebedee seemingly having more of a conscience <laughs> and even coming across as a good guy in some instances and my personal favourite Zoran who I just love his sly and blunt attitude <laughs> and there's two things wrong with that order mister warrior don't move fast his lights may I think that's why also where he said it's said in England it's because of the accents like the proper British pub accents 
We are, but there's no one there. <laughs> the Z-Stacks are all led by Captain Zero, who doesn't really feature that much, but we get the impression that he's a pretty big deal, who probably had a lot of criminal connections in his past. Does Listen to me. We need, as well as maybe we need talk conspiracy theories. It might be a mobster. We never know. Kid, zero owes me, understand? So don't get funny or you'll be in deep trouble. And I do mean deep. You also get some other minor characters that appear, such as Lily Lightship, Grampus, who was a naval submarine, but as a kid I thought was some kind of weird fish. I thought it was a fish as well! Because submarines do not squirt water like that. I genuinely thought it was a fish or some sort of dolphin. Oh, it looks like a tin fish round you, Lily. Very funny. Billy Shupak, a character called Boomer. Yes, Boomer. <laughs> Okay, Boomer! <laughs> <laughs> it's all called Boomer. <laughs> and, uh. Uh. Yeah, Boomer! Boomer! You guys is always trying to tell me I need a dog! Oh, yeah. Way, hey, Yikes. You guys, I need a dog. We don't accept bananas as payment. Damn, <laughs> hey, big shots. Ah, that's good old fashioned family racism. <laughs> you South American ape of junk. What I I mean, what next? You gonna tell me that the one Australian character also happens to be a criminal? What are you doing? Come on, come on! Oh! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, mate. The wind must have blown me off course. <laughs> oh. Oh. The thing that you really got to appreciate with this show is just the production value it had. It's hit. I yeah, mean, it's beautiful. Just look at it. The low angles and close up shots make everything feel so much larger than it actually is. And the set pieces are just so well crafted. I mean, I like the model look of Thomas the Tank Engine. I do. But Tugs really was superior in this Is that aspect. sunset? When I was researching into behind the scenes of this show, I was genuinely shocked oh, wow. at just how small the actual models were. And yep. just how small the production set was. Yeah, fun fact. No fun fact. My um uncle used to work at Shepson Studios. He was a security guard during night shift and he was there during the filming of Tugs and he got to well he didn't wasn't meant to but used to like knock about with the toys toy tugs like well like toys where they basically had to take down and rebuild the set for every new location in the show in fact it took over a whole year just to make the 13 episodes huh. that's insane Another cool thing is that I assume the tugboats themselves were just remote control boats that the team sailed around. That's why I thought, because that's mum told me that um, my uncle used to muck around with them at night um, after filming. But in actual fact, they weren't. Yes, they were remote controlled, but that was purely for the movement of the heads and the eyes. Huh. The movement for the tugboats themselves was actually from a trolley attached below them that the crew would push along. Oh, wow. And the steam coming out of their smokestacks was transferred through a long pipe that connected beneath. Oh. Like, how cool is that? And of course, I need to mention the music score. Where do I see that some behind the scenes? If I have behind the scenes videos on YouTube, I'm going to try and look it up because that looks really fascinating. Which complements the aesthetic of this show beautifully. And fun fact, the music composers for this show were the same two that did the original Thomas the Tank Engine. Huh. Which, when you listen closely, you can actually hear some similarities. Tides were beginning to thaw. It was a busy time for everybody. But river operations got underway again. That train sounds it's very similar to Thomas. Oh, the bridge scene. The fire dock scene. The fire dock theme. I used to love that. I used to love that theme. When he went over the fire dock bridge thing. It was very calming. The music really does help immerse you into the atmosphere. From the tense score we get in the spooky situation. Made his way through the dark shapes of more uh. and trampers. Trying to make sure the ghost tugs weren't following him. Nope. To the dramatic theme that plays as the train approaches a broken railway bridge. Nope. Nope. Can't watch that bit. To a beautiful.
beautiful vocal track used to see off a cruise ship. But no matter how far away you are, know that I'm here to guide you home. I saw that bit on the TikTok, that scene, from the fan base on TikTok. And of course, we've got the main theme of the show, which, similar to Lolo the Penguin, just has this really grand energy to it. And it gives you PTSD. Let's get on to my favourite topic of this show, the dark and creepy moment. Yep. Not only did this show look more professional, but it also had a much more mature theme to it than other typical kids shows at the time. Yep. Where to begin? Well, there's an episode where a tug has to carry out crimes for these two freaky looking gangsters, because if he doesn't, they will quite literally kill his uncle who they've taken hostage. Jesus. There's an episode where the naval submarine Grampus is going to be blown up by the Navy as he has become too old and obsolete, and he is just so complacent with the fact that he's about to die. What? It's no use, Sid. Catch up with me again somewhere. Thanks for all the fun we had together. Bye, Ten Cents. Bye. Bye. There's an episode where one of the Zed Stacks has to carry out work for a criminal gangster, or else the criminal gangster will quote unquote sink him. And what? try anything fancy, or you'll find yourself at the bottom of the harbour with some mint on your hold. <laughs> like, there is a lot of reference to death and crime in this series. Yeah. But two episodes I want to focus on in particular are ghosts and munitions. As these two oh, really God. to the next level. Munitions especially. Yep. Let's first take a look at ghosts. This is the dedicated spooky episode of the series. The Halloween special. It takes place where a huge fog has fallen on the dockyard. Which again, credit to the production team, manages to give the setting a truly eerie feel. Yeah. Oh god, that train. Even though it said it sounds like Thomas, it sounds like Cursed Thomas. Ugh. Throughout the night, there are these numerous sightings of these ghostly white tugs that sail eerily silent through the night. And every time they appear, you get these creepy chants playing. Then there's this scene towards the end where an old ship rises out of the ocean, and the motion of how it comes out just gives you such an unsettling tone. Yep, yeah, I remember that. That's got that got me as well. That oh, I could, I could, that that scared me. And finally, we have the episode that ruined me as a kid. Munition. Yep, that screwed me up as a kid as well. PTSD. Oh boy, munition. Yeah. So seemingly directed by Michael Bay. Michael Bay, the and movie. Michael Bay. Boats. <laughs> Good joke. In this episode, the Tugs are loading up a tanker with dangerous explosives. And the episode is very quick to let you know that there's a heightened level of danger in the air. Just keep it steady. Keep Just to put up for you, um, again, I, I'm four, I was four or five years old. The only thing about new about explosions is what I've seen in Looney Tunes. From, like, Bugs Bunny or, like, the, the Roadrunner. Those are the only things I've seen, like the Acme. Acme bombs. Did you only see things I've seen? Even with dynamite. So this was just a kick in the bollocks into reality of what dynamite is. You find that danger flag. As the last of the explosives are being loaded aboard, a naval tug named Blue Nose barges through and knocks into the explosive barge, causing a fire to start. Now look what happened there, and, the, and the fire is real. It's not cartoony at all. No, engines, quick. And from then on in, it's just all chaos. Absolute. Man, the production team really went all out on this one. As they just nuke the entire set. Yeah, it's all nuked. If it exists, it's probably going to explode. Dockyard? Boom. Gone. Railway? Gone. Fuel tanks? Gone. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, people talk about Thomas and how that can have a few explosions here and there. 
I don't remember that. I do not remember that. Well, it's got nothing on tugs. Yep. The tugboats do their best to put out the fire, but to no avail, which eventually leads to the death of the large crane, Big Mickey. It oh, I can't watch really that bit. Dramatic moment. And I would like to say that he died in this moment, but despite how horrific the scene looks, I suppose he technically didn't die as he does appear in later episodes. Unless they've rebuilt him, or the cranes that we have feelings, I don't know. Um, even that, or it's just like no continuations. But let's face it, he died. Falling from that height and plunging into the ocean, yeah, Big Mickey would be dead. F the chat. Also to die was the large tanker ship that had been loaded in the first place. Which, yeah, I know it doesn't have a face, but it is hinted at in the show that all of these ships have sentient life to them. Yeah. So, yeah, we just we saw a to die. Die right in front of us on screen. That bit right there, that's the bit that really made me scream. Like, everything up, I'm horrified, looking away, but the loud sirens, that ship sinking, and then the sparks come up the chimney. I don't know how that happens, but I, I, know, I physically remember screaming and running out of the room at this very scene. I was a very sensitive child. Rest in peace, Tanker, and all of your crew. F the chat. Seems I'm too late to save the day. <laughs> well, well, well. Get a drift of that, will you, lads? Top hat, all dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow! Insensitive much? <laughs> Everyone's dead. Yep. So if Tugs was such a great show, why did it only last 13 episodes? Yeah. Well, originally a second series was planned for release, but unfortunately the studio at the time, Television South, went bankrupt and so had to cancel production, leading to the other studio, Clearwater Features, having to sell off the models and props, oh. in which some were actually bought by the Thomas studio at the time, Brit Allcroft Company. Oh. Where, if you look closely, oh, yeah. you can see some of them being used as background models in Thomas episodes. Thankfully, though, it's not all bad news. And also, there was an American TV show called Theodore, the tugboat. The main character looks very similar to one of the tugboats. Look up, look up Theodore, the, the little tugboat. As some of the original props and models were later found and purchased by a group of fans huh. and have been restored and put on display at Midlands Railway in Derbyshire. I need to go there. Sadly, though, due to the pandemic, the yeah, exhibition it's all had to close for the remainder of the year. You're infected, but I'm innocent. I'm completely innocent. I'll get quarantine flags up right now, Zoran. But the trust has stated that the exhibition plans on reopening in 2021. Yeah, I need to find out where that is, and I'm going there. Just to face my fears. So best of luck to them. Yeah. So, in conclusion, Tugs really was a grand show that, in my opinion, stood way above the competition at the time, with its exceptional visuals, immersing music and compelling story because oh. each episode had a longer runtime of 15 to 20 minutes stories and characters could be better developed with good pacing yeah and the show just had a much more mature feel to it than other kids shows and not just through the darker moments that i mentioned earlier oh. but just in general as the way the tugboats talk to each other makes it sound more like a pub conversation between adults rather than kid-like characters speaking simplistically. Yeah. Never knew 10 cents is into daylight robbery, did you? Get on with your work, or there'll be daylight robbery out of your pay packets. Anyway, that's all for today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Go and follow uh, Steve Refuse. Um, and... Um... Yeah, and I have officially faced my fears. So, yep, yeah, it's the Big Red, over and out.